Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day number five of the final five Grateful Dead Fairly Well Tour shows live right here in Chicago, Illinois. My name is Matt Kerner for LiveList.com, your number one source for live streaming concerts worldwide. Wow, we have had such an amazing weekend. It is Sunday. We celebrated the 4th of July last night, and we've been catching up with some absolutely incredible crowd. Um, had some great fan interactions. We've even met with some special guests for you. As you can see, the stadium is filling up with us again. The sights, sounds, and smells are absolutely amazing. And it's really closing off a big chapter in our American musical legacy tonight. You know, this is the last time that the Grateful Dead will build together. As the Grateful Dead, of course, the members will go on to do their various projects and philanthropy and continue to live and breathe the music that they've spent half a century cultivating. And um, it's been our pleasure to curate these experiences for you, and we hope that you're looking forward to the last show of the Grateful Dead tonight. You know, this event that you're about to see on pay-per-view is easily the largest ever live stream concert in the history of live stream concerts. It's such a huge event, and uh, we're going to pack another 100,000 fans into Soldier Field again tonight in Chicago. So don't forget to go to LiveList.com right now and register. It's free. You can curate your own playlist, connect with the artists that you love so much, and uh, don't forget to sign up for the pay-per-view stream. Right now, we'd like to show you a uh, special guest interview that we had this evening. Um, this is someone who's been with the dead for a long time. He's a music industry expert and he has a really unique perspective on what this means for the group what it means for us as consumers and overall you know how to create an ongoing experience for all of us even after tonight so let's take a look at that now we met up with Howard Cohen the tour manager for Mickey Hart All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Howard Cohen, manager to Mickey Hart. Howard, thanks so much for making time for us. You're welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. So, Howard, you've been with uh, Mickey and with the, with the Dead for a long time. When, was your, uh, when did you first get started with them? I started back in 1987-88 and um, got brought in to start working with Mickey as he was releasing his uh, two books, Drumming at the Edge of Magic and Planet Drum, in the World Series uh, on Ryko Disc at that time, and uh, been with him ever since. So this is um, this is a, a closing out a big chapter in our in our history here as uh, you know American music lovers and as Dead fans. Uh, what does it mean for Mickey and uh, what does it mean for you going to, going into the future um, as far as our culture speaking and um, about making the music live on? Well, it's just such a, a blessing to be able to be here making music again uh, with his friends and his brothers. I think he's really uh, been enjoying the uh, process of getting back together and rehearsing and, and putting this uh, amazing song list with this amazing group of guys uh, with you know Trey, Jeff and Bruce coming in to support the core four. It's been an amazing experience. Awesome. And what's your take on the, uh, the changing landscape of the concert consumption? We're in a big venue tonight. We're in yeah. a beautiful city. Yeah. Um, are, we, uh, are we capturing the dead scene well? Well, I think that there was no choice. I mean, the demand, as, as I think everybody came to found out, was so find out. It was just so huge. Um, we, we had the idea to do it here in the, in the Midwest uh, for a number of different reasons, including this was the last place that the dead played when Jerry was alive. Um, I think in terms of the changing landscape of the concert business, obviously there's all kinds of rising costs and logistics and things like that that go on. But, you know, uh, we and, and Peter Shapiro and Madison House uh, have tried to continue to create value and allow for fans of, of all different types to come. There's 90, the best seats in the house right down there, right down front are $99. Yeah. And I don't know what other major touring act is going to be able to, uh, you know, where you can find that kind of... Uh, value anywhere else. Well, you guys are certainly bringing it home for everybody. You're making it available for all of us to experience here in the venue, and I think you guys are doing a wonderful job capturing the vibe, and uh, thank you so much for being with us, Howard. You're welcome. We've been working hard. All right, that was Howard Cohen, Mickey Hart's tour manager. Our pleasure to speak with Howard this afternoon. For those of you who are just joining us, uh, we are on LiveList.com, the number one guide to live streaming concerts worldwide. And we're live right here in Soldier Field in Chicago, Illinois. It's been an absolutely incredible experience to be here for the last three days, wrapping up a five-day tour for the Grateful Dead, their final time billing together as such. And uh, we, you know, we've been having a great time catching up with the fans. It's really about the fan experience. 
experience. The band is doing this to you know, encapsulate a legacy. And I think that uh, we found that. It's come across to the fans and the people you know, live in the lot, the people that we're seeing pile into the stadium behind us right now. We had a chance to check up on a lot of these folks as they were coming into the venue, and we asked them some great questions. So let's check out some of those fan testimonials now. We hope you enjoy. Phenomenal. I can't explain it. I just love great music, and I've loved them since I was a kid. It's the best concert of my life. This is the Grateful Dead. Feeling the love and the beautiful music that the Grateful Dead provides for everybody all over the universe, you know. And it's just uh, always an incredible time, and you're just, everyone's so friendly and happy, and you can talk amongst people. It's a big happy fest, and it's uh, great to be a participant in this fairly well, and I hope it's not all over yet. Just love the atmosphere, just love the music, just love it all. Gonna miss it. Tonight, it's kind of bittersweet. <laughs> it, uh, it's the end to a lot, and to be part of it, it's life changing. This is uh, our one last hurrah. It's just good to see friends from all over the country meet up in one place. And it's just uh, the whole end of the line, you know. It's, it's great to be here with you know 200,000 other people that, that love you know what they do. And uh, it's, just, it's been a great experience. Chicago has been unbelievable. The shows have been fantastic, and uh, it's, just, it's, it's been always a great vibe. So it's, it's, it's just fantastic. I really not just the music, but I wanted to be here for the experience, be here with the band, be here with my fellow Deadheads, be here with family to wish. Our boys well, fairly well. This is this is everything to me. This is my last chance to say goodbye to a piece of history. <laughs> uh, but to think that this is the last time these guys are ever ever gonna play together, it's sad in some ways. But would miss it for the world. Great opportunity. I'm blessed to be here. 60,000 of my closest friends. I'm just happy to be here. This we all know amazing. that the love and everything that the Grateful Dead meant to us is still going to be with us in our hearts and we're just so thankful for all of the joy and everything that they've given us. Well, I'm just really glad that my son gets experienced it because he's been listening to the dead since he was, you know, out of the womb. So many songs that I'm excited to hear hopefully they play tonight. And I'll reflect on it probably sometime next week when I go home, when I'm listening to all my dead bootlegs. I'm like, this is how Jerry played, how did Trey, what was Trey's interpretation? It'll be pretty interesting. But uh, I, I, I couldn't be happy to be here. I think tonight's going to be the best night of this three-run show. They're saving all their best stuff, I believe, for last. So we'll see. But uh, couldn't think of a better place to be on July 5th, uh, 2015 in Chicago. With some new friends, like Vanessa. I'll be back. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to you live right here at Soldier Field, LiveList.com, your number one guide to live streaming concerts worldwide. If you're just joining us, we just heard some very heartfelt fan testimonials from being here at the final number five of the final five Grateful Dead Fairly Well Tour shows. A lot of these folks that we met with is, uh, they are using this opportunity to say goodbye to a legacy that's influenced their life in such an impactful way. We spoke to people that have driven all, you know, from all over the place, as far away as the south, the southern states, and um, a lot of folks that have even followed the group from California. So it's been interesting, you know, to see uh, how far the fans are willing to go in order to pay respect to the band. So this is a two-way street on the experience side of things, everyone. It's very, um, it's a somber mood here tonight. People are still raring to go and very excited, but overall, this is everyone's chance to say goodbye to a living legacy that's culminating right here tonight in Chicago. If you're just joining us, you're on LiveList.com. We're giving you hundreds of concerts a day and thousands of concerts a month, and this is our exclusive pre-show. We're gonna show you some behind-the-scenes stuff, um, meet with some more special guests, and really give a feel for what it takes to put on a big production like this. There's some really interesting spots coming up, so don't forget to go to LiveList.com right now, register, it's absolutely free. You can curate your own playlist, connect with the artists that you love so much. And right now we'd like to take you behind the scenes a little bit and uh, show you a little bit about what it's like to be in this 
great city of Chicago to produce an event like this. And here from a perspective we don't always consider when producing a large show to this extent, which is how to stay green, sustainable, and what it takes from a local standpoint to really bring this fan experience into a logistical level that impacts how we enjoy our shows. We checked out uh, Stephanie Katsaros from Brightbeat. I'd like to show that to you now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here with Stephanie Katsaros from Brightbeat. Stephanie, thanks for being with us. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. So can you tell us a little bit about what Brightbeat is and um, how you're contributing to the awesome event that we're experiencing today? Yeah, yeah. Brightbeat is a sustainability consulting firm. We create sustainability strategies for big venues and events like the Dead at Soldier Field. So we were hired by Peter Shapiro of Madison House to really make sure that the production was being managed operationally uh, responsibly. Uh, and that really means recycling is happening, well organized, food is being donated when it can be, composted when it cannot be, and really just helping to keep the whole production kind of in a good flow, environmentally speaking. That's awesome, and that's really fascinating because so for me as a concert goer and as a fan, I've actually been seeing your work since I've walked in the door then. Oh, well, I'm glad you've noticed. Um, there's recycling X-frames with clear bags that everyone should put their cups in. Um, at the bars, they're recycling their cans. We're making sure that all the bartenders have the supplies they need. With a production of this scale and the beer drinkers of this quantity, <laughs> there's just a lot of details associated with it. But, but yeah, I think that front of house is supposed to be easy for a fan who kind of wants to think about the environment but more so wants to have a good time. Just as long as they have a place to put their recyclables, then we've done our job. That's awesome. So how long have you been doing the sustainability consulting and management aspect of big shows like this? Well, it's been five and a half years with Brightbeat. Um, I worked in radio for a long time, so I was doing concert production and promotion uh, a lot on the back end. And so we really merged kind of what we saw as being needs with uh, what the opportunities were with infrastructure. In a city like Chicago, it's really Chicago wants to be green and wants to kind of share the environmental goals of the city with big events like this. So Brightbeat works with the city of Chicago and other big, big venues to make it happen. Well, that's awesome. So what is your take on being in Chicago? This is a last Grateful Dead show for all intents and purposes. They're no longer billing as the dead any longer. And um, how do you think that impacts us as American music lovers? Oh man, it's a big question, especially today, it being the, the day of the last show. I mean, I was here 20 years ago at Soldier Field, and it was my college roommate's first ever concert. It was Jerry's last one. It's so significant, I think, what The Dead has done, not just to Dead fans, but you look at Trey, an amazing guitarist, who's practicing for this show will forever change who he is as a musician. So as music lovers, I think the influence of the dead, not only on the individuals who are playing with them on stage now, but kind of everyone who's got excited about it as fans and fellow musicians, I think I think the dead's uh, legacy is, is huge. And it's, it's such a beautiful city that we're in. Chicago's very walkable, it's very people friendly, and they're very earth conscious. And there's, you know, they've hosted upwards of 100,000 people each day for the show, so it's pretty incredible. Um, and where are you guys coming from? Where can we find Brightbeat? Um, Brightbeat's based in Chicago. We do a lot of work at other venues here in the city and also with other festivals around the country. And I'm, I'm born and raised in Chicago, so, I mean, I'm proud to be from a city that's green. I'm proud to be in a city that that these guys felt should be the, la the location of the last Dead show. Um, the legacy of the Grateful Dead is huge and everyone feels it. And I think with the sustainability that I'm uh, charged with doing here, the legacy will not only be at this show, at these three shows, but really Soldier Field will be impacted beneficially by what we've done this weekend, which is pretty exciting. Beautiful. Stephanie, thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. Thanks, Matt. Have fun at the shows. You too. All right, folks, we just heard from Stephanie Katsaros from Brightbeat. Awesome insights on what it takes to make this type of event sustainable. 
A lot of logistics involved and incredibly fascinating. So, just joining us, we are here live at Soldier Field on day number five, the final five Grateful Dead Fairly Well Tour shows right here on LiveList.com, your number one guide to live streaming concerts worldwide. Don't forget to check out all of the upcoming shows, hundreds a day, thousands of months, available on LiveList.com. Sign up and register for free. Also, click the feedback button at the bottom. Let us know how we're doing. It's our pleasure to curate these events for you, so give us your feedback. Click feedback, feedback at LiveList.com. All right, guys, you can see the stadium is filling up behind me. There's lots, lots of anticipation for this last show. We've been hearing a lot from people who are experiencing their first Grateful Dead show and also their last. And it's, um, it's just as much of a mutual goodbye and truly fare thee well for the band as much as the fans. People are driving from all over the country to pay their you know, last respects, if you will, to the music and to the band. And we've heard a lot from people about what it's like just to be here to experience the crowd and the community. A lot of people are talking about how they're sharing it with their children and their loved ones and uh, what it's like to be you know, live in the lot for the last time. So we'd like to catch up with some of those folks now. Check it out live in the lot right here in Chicago at the final Grateful Dead concert. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are live in the lot with Haley. Thank you so much for being with us. Hi. So Haley, uh, where are you from? Cincinnati, Ohio. And you drove all the way from Cincinnati to Chicago? Yes. And what, what brings you all the way here to make such an effort to uh, come here to the Grateful Dead? Uh, well, look around. So what do you like about the music so much? The feeling you get, um, the people that vibe with it as well. I mean, the music is great, but it's, it's the way it makes you feel. So where'd you guys come from? Nick, where'd you drive from today? Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis. And why all the way to Chicago for a Dead show? Because it's the Grateful Dead. It's the last one that's ever going to happen. I had to be here. Can't miss it. That's awesome. And what about you guys? What brings you, what keeps you coming back? Um, honestly, uh, I mean, if you look around, there's just nothing but uh, beautiful, happy people around here. There's a bunch of nice, friendly faces. Everybody's just down here to have a good time, too, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. What about you, man? This is the biggest thing in 20 years for anybody who's listened to music, so I had to be here. All right, we are here live in the lot with Taylor. Thank you so much for being with us. Hi. What keeps you coming back? What do you like about the music and the culture so much? I mean, everybody loves each other. Like, what's not to love about it? Everybody's nice, you know, it's like a, I don't know, it's just a good way of life. It makes me feel happy. And what do you think about the fact that this, after today, is they're not going to be billing together anymore? I'm not very happy about it, but, you know, 50 years is a long time. If they want to retire and go do their own thing, by all means, it's their own choice. And they still got Rat Dog, I'll still go on different tours, I'll still have fun, it'll be fantastic either way. keeps you coming back to hear the music over and over again. Have you ever attended a show? Yes, we have. Well, I feel like that uh, you probably already know the answer, but cool people, good music, um, I don't know, why not? We got exactly. lucky enough to be here, so we're here. So we're closing out a big chapter in our American history tonight. The Dead is uh, no longer going to bill as the Dead. So what do you, what do you think? Is the music going to live on? Yeah, it's going to live on through everybody here, and everyone's going to pass all of this music and all of this culture on to our kids, to our friends, and yeah, I mean, we got kids, we got... Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the music will live on, right? Awesome. Thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard some awesome, heartfelt uh, fan interactions from the lot. Everyone talking about their experience, why they're at the show. It's fascinating to see it, and we're bringing it to you live right here on LiveList.com, your number one guide to live streaming concerts worldwide. Hundreds of concerts a day, thousands a month. Sign up for free right now on LiveList. We are coming to you live from Soldier Field in Chicago. You can see the crowd is still piling into the into the uh, stadium over here. We're expecting 100,000 people again tonight for the final of the last five shows, The Grateful Dead. It's somber, it's exciting, and it's right here on 
live list. Don't forget to sign up for the pay-per-view, livelist.com. We have a special guest lined up for you. We caught up with Nicole Boxer. She's a filmmaker and an anthropologist. She's been following the Grateful Dead and documenting her experiences for a long time. She has some fascinating insights about the culture, and uh, we'd like to share that with you. Check it out, Nicole Boxer, filmmaker, anthropologist. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here live in the lot with Nicole Boxer. Thank you so much for joining us, Nicole. Oh, it's amazing to be here. Fare thee well. We're on the final final two shows with the Grateful Dead. And, um, Nicole, you yourself are quite a Grateful Dead follower. You're a filmmaker and a historian. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience working uh, with the culture and maybe when your first experience was and how that's influenced you in your professional work? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I am a native of Marin County, California. California, which is the home of the Grateful Dead. Um, many of your fans, I'm sure, know about Front Street and San Rafael. And uh, the the family that really is the Grateful Dead really is a network of families from that came together in the 60s and really stayed together for a long, long time. So I'm the second generation of that. Really, my my good friends are the kids of the band. And uh, I guess my, my, my initial um, contact was through my mother, who was a local politician. And she's now a senator, Barbara Boxer, but she uh, she campaigned a lot in Marin for local grassroots environmental issues and things like that. So we ran into members of the dead all the time being a little kid. Yeah. And uh, then, then years later, I was like, wow, this music. So when I got turned on to the music through my friends that were the kids of the band, yeah. uh, that was it. I was hooked and I was like all, all of a sudden on the road with the band. And what are some of those experiences like in the road? Is there anything memorable that's really, really brought it together for you or influenced you? I, mean, I think everyone wants to know what was your first show. And it's funny because once you get to know the guys in the band, like um, I happen to be on the, the board of Headcount, which is an organization that registers voters at rock concerts. And one of our founding members is Bob Weir. Okay. So Bob asked me actually what was my first show. And I was able to tell him it was Long Beach. It was November 16th, 1985. It was my 18th birthday. I almost got arrested for an open container ticket. And uh, luckily I evaded that, but I'll never forget it as long as I live. Like my first peggy -o and just some really beautiful moments uh, with Jerry and, um, and since then, I mean, a lot of, like I said, a lot of road trips uh, all over California. We wouldn't miss a show in, in California. So Sacramento, you know, Irvine, like, what are some of the other great men? Like up in Tahoe, I think. Um, and, I'm, and I was lucky enough to be really good friends with Justin Kreutzman, who's actually running all the video here. And, and all the, the jumbotrons you see, that is Justin Kreutzman's work. So, yeah. So what, is it, what does it mean to you that after tomorrow, this is it for the Grateful Dead billing together? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's a moment of tremendous gratitude and appreciation for what the whole scene has meant and what it means, and particularly to people that were there, like when I was born, you weren't even around yet. I was born in 67, and the, those, the band members and the friends and the Merry Pranksters and all those guys, what a culture, what a scene, and such a deep, meaningful scene. It's not just the music and it's not just the trip, but it's like a whole consciousness. So, you know, I'm sad about it, but how blessed we've been and how lucky we've been, you know, that, that this, this uh, moving circus festival is 50, yeah. you know? Yeah. So pretty amazing. Absolutely. Nicole, thank you so much for being with us. It's been a pleasure. Nicole Boxer, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Nicole Boxer, filmmaker and anthropologist. Our pleasure to catch up with Nicole. We're coming to you live right now at Soldier Field in Chicago, day five of the final five Grateful Dead Fairly Well Tour shows. And what a crowd. It's filling up. Another 100,000 people in the stadium tonight coming to you live right now in our exclusive pre-show on LiveList.com. Don't forget to register for the pay-per-view, LiveList.com. Hundreds of shows every week, thousands a month. Your guide to live streaming concerts worldwide. You know, it's fascinating when you think about logistics of what it takes to put on such a big event. This is conceivably the largest ever streamed event 
um, and it's it's uh, it's been going for five straight days. And to make that happen takes an amazing crew. It takes a lot of logistics and a lot of technology. And we went behind the scenes with Live Alliance TV, the guys behind bringing this to all of you at home to get a feel for what it takes to put this show production on. So let us take you behind the scenes right now to take a look at what it takes to bring this to you. Live Alliance. We are here with Craig, technical producer with Alliance Productions. Craig, thanks for being with us. Sure, thanks for having me. So Craig, can you tell us a little bit about what you do with Alliance Productions and what this is that we're seeing behind us? All right, we're in the control room here of the show. Basically, I am in charge of getting all the technical aspects for the show together. Uh, we've got 18 cameras here. Uh, this is where the director will sit. The technical director here will switch the show. Um, they'll look at all those cameras, choose the best shots for the people at home, and you know, send off the signal to uh, the rest of the world. We are over here looking at what looks like a uh, control panel and something out of Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, could you, t Greg, could you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at and how it works? Sure. This is the switcher. This is where basically all the signals in the truck come together. The cameras, the tape machines, graphics machines and everything. And a technical director will sit here and switch the show. A director will say, look at the shots, frame up shots and say, ready one, take one, ready two, take two. The technical director will actually do that right down here, take the different cameras, they go up on program mix and dissolve graphics in. Um, so basically everything in the truck comes to here and the technical director puts it all together to what you see at home. So Craig, you're here in Chicago. Is this, uh, this is not the first stop for you guys. How far have you traveled so far? We started last week in Santa Clara. We did the two shows there. We came straight here from there. Uh, we got here, started setting up Tuesday. We have about five tractor trailers here, that are audio trucks, screen trucks, the A and B unit for the main production, um, uplink trucks, generators. Um, we use 18 cameras on this show from the hard cameras at the front of house to handhelds on the stage, uh, sky cam here, a blimp, a lot of specialty cameras on stage. So the event tonight in Chicago has got about 100,000 people in it guys, and how many, do you guys know how many cameras we have set up tonight? We've got, uh, I think, 20 cameras, 18 20 cameras. to 20, something like that. We've got a blimp, a blimp camera, a uh, sky cam that zips all around the stadium, very cool, and uh, cameras all over the place. Yeah. Well, it must be pretty awesome to switch the show up. And Danny, some of the, the creative insights that you have, anything you, that you could share with us before we actually see it? Um, keep your eye out for the blimp. That was really fun to do, if you see it. There's some bears walking around. <laughs> All right. We have uh, Nate and Danny from Live Alliance TV. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a little behind-the-scenes look at what it takes to put on this amazing type of streaming event for you. You're coming to you live right now on LiveList.com. Don't forget to sign up for the pay-per-view after our exclusive pre-show footage right here on LiveList. We're bringing you hundreds of concerts a day, thousands of concerts a month. LiveList is your number one guide to live streaming concerts worldwide, so sign up for free right now. You can curate your own playlist and connect with the artists that you love right now, LiveList.com. Also, let us know what you think. Click the feedback button, feedback at LiveList. You know, this whole concert experience and these uh, testimonials we've heard from fans, we've heard from special guests and producers, and it's really about bringing that powerful, visceral experience to all of you right here on Live List, and it's our pleasure to do it. It also takes a crew of 10 people to put together our exclusive pre-show. So let's go behind the scenes and see the guys in the control room right now that are bringing this broadcast to you right here on Live List, our very own Live List crew, guys. Okay, looks like something's uh, going on right there. Look, there they are in the room. Say, so, hey, how's it going, guys? Look at the crowd outside. It's just, uh, it's just awesome. The crowd is raring to go. Uh, and, um, you know, this is the largest stream um, in history. This is going to be, this is going down in the record books, ladies and gentlemen. Day number five, the final five, Grateful Dead, Fairly Well Tour shows. And it has been our absolute pleasure to share our tribe with yours. And, uh, you know, um, that's what we're trying to do is bring those visceral experiences to you at home. So register right now on LiveList.com, sign up for free, your number one guide to live streaming concerts worldwide. For LiveList.com, my name is Matt Kerner, here in Chicago at the last Grateful Dead show on LiveList. Rock on, everyone.
Did I? 